It's been three months since the Apple Watch 4 has hit store shelves, and we can now finally take electrocardiograms with it. Let's go through how to set it all up and see what it's got to say about my heart. First off, you want to make sure you're updated to iOS 12.1.1 on your iPhone, and then head to your watch app. Go to General, then Software Update, and you should see WatchOS 5.1.2 available for download. Go ahead and download it. Also remember that you'll need to place your Apple Watch on the charger to install the update. After it's all done, simply open the ECG app on your Apple Watch. It then asks you to go to your health app to set it up. As you're going through the setup, it'll remind you that it can't detect heart attacks or strokes, and then ask you to take your first ECG. Before taking the ECG on your Apple Watch, make sure it's snug against your wrist and that both your arms are resting on either your lap or a table, otherwise you may get an inconsistent reading. Then simply hold one finger flat against the crown for 30 seconds as it performs the electrocardiogram. You can even use your thumb for a potentially more accurate reading. Luckily for me, it didn't detect any atrial fibrillation and gave a sinus rhythm result. This basically means that the upper and lower chambers of my heart are beating in sync. However, the results can vary between recordings, so make sure to run multiple tests on different days to make sure you're in the clear. The Apple Watch also gives you the option of adding in your symptoms if you're not feeling well. All of this will then be recorded into the Health app, where you can track all your results and even export PDFs to bring to your doctor. Going back to the watch app on your iPhone, you can go to the heart settings and adjust the heart rate that you would like to receive high heart rate and low heart rate notifications. You can also set up irregular rhythm notifications as well. This will make your Apple Watch occasionally look at your heartbeat when you're resting to check for irregular rhythm. Now if you do receive a notification, you should definitely see your doctor because the Apple Watch confirms AFib with multiple readings. Now let's say someone from your family wants to run an ECG. How can you do so without messing up your personal health records in your iPhone? Well, first of all, it may not be accurate since the test may be based on your age and health information, but if you do let your friends try it, you can go to the Health app, select an ECG result, and go to the bottom of the page to delete the recording so it doesn't mess with your health records. So we know that atrial fibrillation can lead to heart attack or stroke, but how common is it? Well, the CDC says that only 2% of people younger than age 65 have AFib, while about 9% of people 65 and older have it. So if you're still pretty young, you most likely don't have it. There's a good chance that most of that 2% is close to 65 years of age anyway. So most likely, running ECGs on your Apple Watch will be something you do just for fun. But if you are that one rare case, it could save your life. Now I can't see very many people 65 years of age or older wearing an Apple Watch unless someone in their family bought it for them for the sole reason of checking on their heart and for the new fall detection feature that can automatically contact emergency services. In that case, the Apple Watch Series 4 is a great device for them. Alongside the new ECG feature, WatchOS 5.1.2 finally brings some new complications to the infograph watch face, including mail, maps, messages, find my friends, home, news, phone, and remote. Thanks for watching guys, and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on more videos like this one.